Alberta's oil sands are the key to Canada economic revival. An inconvenient truth, resource extraction is, by its very nature, environmentally impactful. Like the mining and extraction of rare air metals, lithium compounds used in the manufacture of lithium-ion batteries, wind turbines, smart electronics that power the nascent green renewable energy transition, developing resources like oil and gas comes with an environmental cost. To pretend otherwise is, at best, intellectually dishonest, at its worst, it is dangerously responsible and naive. This is the unburnished truth, inconvenient as it may be. I am a pragmatist. As such, I like to keep my feet planted firmly on terra firma. While deception and subterfuge may have its advantages on occasion, self-deception, I have found, offers no discernible biological or intellectual advantage. Yes, there is an environmental opportunity cost associated with the development of natural resources. There is also, however, an equal benefit associated with that cost. A necessity est imperative, a necessary imperative to meet the current and near-term energy needs of the modern world. But a question arises, how best do we as Canadian, as Albertans, as heir to this essential and value resource perform this polarizing yet necessary task in a manner that balances the moral equation? The answer is, we do so as responsibly and sustainably as possible. We licitly give as big a societal and environmental penance as we possibly can. We do so that the balance or sum total of our actions is either zero or positive. We develop mitigating technologies, we fund research into green and renewable energy alternatives, we reclaim the land after the needed resources have been developed, and we return it to its previous natural state. We support, nurture our communities and its people so that these communities thrive. We become exemplar stewards of the environment and the resources with which we have been entrusted. We offset the negative aspects of our task with positive initiatives and actions. We become the oak tree which society clutches so much and for so long until finally high above us the tree but supported by us it can unfold its crowns in the open light and make a display of its full happiness. We become scene eaters. The scene eaters. The scene eater is variously defined as an entity who is called upon to perform a morally questionable but absolutely necessary task. This entity will, in the course of performing such a task, remove or attempt to remove the morally questionable aspects of said task so that its mission remains pure. Countries, states, provinces, counties, cities, private corporate entities that engage in the development of natural resources while taking the lead in mitigating the resulting environmental degradation and proactively fund research in alternative green technologies, supporting the health and wellness, economic vitality and viability of the communities in which they operate, companies that provide well-paying jobs and rewarding career opportunities to employees, contractors, and traditionally disadvantaged groups. These various entities, the very engines that power national economies, are our modern-day scene eaters. In this context, we, Alberta, absorb the scenes of our society, thus absolving its soul and freeing it from its moral and ethical culpability. As scene eaters, as a consequence of being societies, Sin eaters, we carry the sins of this society through the peculiar disfavors of fate. We accept damnation for the degradation of the environment just so that this society can pursue the resources it needs to survive. Our essential raison d'etre is that we believe that as part of a good, decent, and healthy society, we do not place ourselves as its sole significance and highest justification, but rather as a humble, insignificant function. It is therefore 
because of this simple epistemic justification that in good conscience, we Albertans accept the mockery, derision, self-righteousness, hypocrisy, and ridicule without making any allowance for utility in its estimation of this society we continue to serve. We offer a willing sacrifice of enormous quantities of our people, our treasure, our reputation. For the sake of this society, Albertan must and do more, contribute more, endure more. For the sake of this society, our residual portion of Alberta's natural wealth must be and is further reduced further render incomplete, just so that this society should exist. But not for our sake and benefit alone, oh no, for we are only a base, only a framework, a framework on which the exceptional kind of this society's human nature can raise itself to its highest function and in general to a higher form of being. We as Albertan make this choice, a free choice, determined by pure reason to treat this society and its human capital never merely as a mean to an end, but always at the same time as an end. We are the oak tree, never the climbing vine. We act thusly, hoping that the maxims of our actions were to become, through our will and example, a universal standard of service, of duty.